Welcome to the VLS collection submission demo. My name is Stephen Wilfield and I'm the Open Library Coordinator for eCampus Ontario. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to submit your VLS project. An email will be sent to you with a direct link once it is available, but you can also access the form on the VLS collection website. Before submitting, before completing the submission form, please read the criteria and the submission guide for further instructions and assistance. Simply scroll to find the submission form. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use Essentials of Linguistics as my resource. So you're going to start by entering your VLS project ID. Sorry, in my case, it's ALGM-1016. This is the unique number that is associated with your VLS project. If you type the number incorrectly, as you can see here, uh, a red message will appear warning you that your VLS project ID is incorrect. This will allow you to double check that you are entering the correct ID. So I will go back and fix that. After your VLS project ID is correct, then you will select the category from the drop-down list. This is the project category that you selected in your EOI. So click creating a new online course. Once you select your VLS project category, please answer whether you're supported by CVLP by clicking yes or no. If you click no, you can move on to the next section. If you click yes, you will be asked to provide the name of the vendor or vendors that you used. So as you can see, if you click no, you can move on. If you click yes, you must enter the name of the vendor or vendors that you used. The next section will capture your information as the person submitting the VLS project. Please enter your first name, last name, and institutional email. So this is, in my case, this is, it's mine. Once you have entered your information, you, you will go to the next section where you provide details about your resource. Please note that not all of the fields are required to submit your project. For the fields that are not marked with an asterisk, please answer them if they're relevant for your resource. So you're going to enter the title of your resource. So in this case, it is Essentials of Linguistics, followed by any the author or authors of your of your source. If you have more than one author, you can click add to add as many as, as you need, as many authors as, as you have in your resource. So th these next few fields are not required, but, but if your resource has this information, please make sure that it is captured in these boxes. So the first one is editor. So this is the person or organization who compiled and or revised your the, the resource and other contributors. So these, this is a person or a organization that helped create this resource, but is not an editor or, or an author. So some examples include instructional designers, and translators. Next, you're going to enter the primary contact email for the resource if, if, if it's other than yourself. Ideally, this would be the person who can answer any questions about and or update the content of the resource itself. So you'll then insert the publisher, the name of the publisher, if, it, if you have a publisher for this resource. If the publisher is, with, is a department within an institution, enter the name of the institution after the department, separating the names with a comma. So open education lab, comma, Ontario Tech University. You will you will next enter the publication date. You you can select. Please 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 note that only the year is mandatory. However, providing full publication dates when when available are important to helping users sort resources by date more accurately. If you're unsure of the publication date, please just enter the date that you are filling up this form. So in this case, today is February seventh, two thousand and twenty-two. After inserting the publication date, you, you, can, you will select the primary language of your resource from the drop down list here. If your language is not listed here, please select other. Other, select not applicable if your project is an image or, or numerical data. So I will select English. 
Next, if applicable, indicate whether your resource is an adaption, remix, or derivative of another resource, either in the eCampus Ontario Open Library or elsewhere. For example, you should complete this field if your VLS project category is adapt an existing open educational resource or create course shell to an existing open course. If applicable, click yes and provide the URL or URLs of the original resource or resources. Either enter one per line if you have more than, than one, one source. So if you hit no or unsure, you will move on. If it yes, then you will be asked to enter a website or URL of, of any related sources. Select the education level of your resource from the drop down menu. This is meant to capture the target audience of learners or educators within the Canadian post secondary system. If you have any questions about this, please refer to the VLS submission guide. You will then be asked to select the learning resource type from the drop down menu. So, in, with this one, you can choose multiple options here. And if you have any questions, once again, please refer to the VLS submission guide. So I will choose reference material and textbook. The next box, you will provide a brief description or abstract for your project. This will appear on the open library catalog and is meant to guide users in selecting materials that meet their needs. Please note that the character limit for this is set at 3000. So I, I have a description ready to go and I will copy and paste that there. After entering your description, you will be asked about the subject of your resource. As, as with the learning resource type, you have the option to uh, choosing multiple choices that best describe your resource. You may select up to three categories. So I will select under humanities, language and linguistics, and under social sciences, law and legal studies. You will, you will then insert any keywords, any keywords that you have. These will help users find what they are looking for and organize your resource into the appropriate categories. Please note that you can only add three keywords and you can, you can also include hashtags. If you're using hashtag, please use camel case. To enter more than one keyword, separate the words with a comma and capitalize the first letter for each keyword. So I have three keywords available here. So phonology, semantics, and hashtag morphology. You will then have the option to report any accessibility statements that you may have for your resource. If you click no or unknown, you will be able to proceed to the next section. However, if you click yes, you'll be asked to attach a URL to the accessibility review. If the review is not available via URL, you can, you can upload any files to the additional files section below. So as you see here, if I hit unknown, no, you can move on. But if you hit yes, you, you will be asked to insert a URL. You will, you will now be asked to, to link your project's URL if it's applicable or add any additional files that you may have for your resource. These additional files can include a resource cover, print on demand files, or external peer reviews. If you're unsure, you should upload a file if you have, or if you have any questions about your files, please refer to the VLS submission guide. The on screen here is a list of supported file types that, that you may upload into this section. Next, you, you will insert the, the resource license type from, from the drop down menu under a license here. If, if your license type does not appear on your list, on this list, please select other. Use this traditional knowledge label field if your resource contains any traditional knowledge labels. This next section is all about making sure that your resource is discoverable. If you have this information, please provide it as it allows your resources to be found more easily. These extra fields include the DOI and ISBN. And I note multiple ISBNs can be added, but they must be separated by commas. And if anybody on your team has an ORCID ID, please put that here. If you have multiple people with ORCID IDs, you can click add to add more than one. If a person or an organization other than the author or authors owns and manages the rights to your resource, please specify that here. 
you will, you will then be asked uh, if the resource is part of a series. If you click yes, you will be asked to link to the other resources in the series. Please note that clicking add will allow you to enter more than one resource. It, you will then be asked if your if your resource has an external peer review or post publication peer review available for this resource. Again, if you hit yes, you will be asked to provide a URL or a website for this for this review. Finally, finally, you will be asked if your resource is part, is tied to a specific course, module, program, or micro credential. If you answer yes to this question, you will be asked to provide the name of the institution and the name of the course. Please note that this is a required field. Uh, so if the answer to the above, if the answer to the above question is yes, then you will have to provide the name of the course and the institution. So with that, uh, please take a minute to review your answers. And if you have any, if you have any questions, please reach out to the eCampus Ontario team or consult the VLS submission guide. And you can go ahead and hit submit and your your VLS submission will be complete.